Hi, what's going on guys? It's Almond. Welcome back to another Loser 101 video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the Nightmare Dungeon and how to beat it on Challenge Mode. I will eventually upload the Standard Mode version of this guide because I assume the cheats are going to be a little bit different once the Standard Mode comes out. But I wanted to make a video separately for challenge mode to the people who are wanting to beat the dungeon currently on Live Realm. Uh, and uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. So if you do enjoy this type of content, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all type of stuff. Join Discord if you guys haven't. I appreciate everyone that's been joining the Discord. Within the minutes of like the past couple days, I think we gained like 50 or 60 members. I think the day that we got Worlds first, so many people join the Discord. And honestly, I appreciate everybody that's been watching the content and just supporting everything alongside of it so appreciate all of that so let's talk about the nightmare dungeon and try to break it down as best as i possibly can i even wrote down a bunch of notes on the side so i can keep track of how i want to organize this video so a lot of stuff to talk about and uh yeah so be sure to leave a like subscribe all type of stuff and let's get into the actual content now you ideally want to do this with four people i mean you literally can't do this with less than four people when it comes to challenge mode because it's four different portals and then you have to be able to grab the idols all at the same times so if you can't grab those at the same time you literally cannot do this uh without four people so keep that in mind at the beginning of the dungeon, they show you about the broken dream and how to basically you have to dodge it. If you get hit by a broken dream, you'll get sent back to the start and you lose HP. The one at the beginning is more of a, I guess you can say a baby version of the actual ones that are in the maze, but basically just kind of teaches you like, hey, don't touch this. Basically keeps you in mind. So keep that as well. So once all four players make it across the broken dream, there's going to be like four idols of negative energies that are basically just a shadow freddy click on all four at the same time it'll put like a timer in the bottom and these will unlock the two gates that show portals each of these portals have different variations of minions depending on what minion is allowed you can use those hanging effects if you do not know too much about rochambeau honestly you can just get a bunch of pips you can just put down an aura like frenzy or reinforce or even like the 25 auras you can put a bubble up which will give you like another 25 percent and you can just spam hits basically like some high high dealing hits you can do that or if there's a minion that's favorable you can use the gambits at your arsenal so hey if you want to use like an oni or any of the jinns or scions you can do that in this fight and just to quickly do it of course if you're in a storm you can do storm out it just depends on the school that you're playing on you can definitely do this dungeon on different schools i think from my just like playthrough from doing it i've definitely realized that you can do this on basically all school so i think that's a good way of how they designed this dungeon as a whole now i will put a uh, image on screen of what minion allows you to do what basically if it says if it's in the green column means that you can do that hanging effect you can put if it's a neg charm you can put a neg charm big blade or a uh, trap hot dot whatever now you can still just do aura spam and hits but if you pay attention to the image as i've shown if if it matches the two of the same school matches the same thing on the green side for example if we have storm and for example uh balance balance lets you do any hang effect and storm you are allowed to use blades so that means i'm allowed to blade against a balance storm now for example if it is a death ice what i can do is i can trap and shield um and dot against a death ice i cannot do a weakness on a death ice because the fact is ice counters weaknesses even though death doesn't i can just, i can't do it against an ice so if it's matching in the same row on that school that means you can do that hanging effect so keep that in mind so hopefully that gives you a better understanding of all the minions and uh, how to do that so uh personal preference on the portal but just remember that the portal makes you spawn at different side of the maps uh later down the line so we'll talk about that in a second okay now that you guys got that out of the way and once you kill all four minions or the solo fights you guys can say is that there'll be another negative energy on the floor once all four players grab that it will open the next set of gates and now we move on to the maze portion of the dungeon which is basically the whole premise behind it now, if you look in the sky, there'll be a beacon, like a 
bright light beacon and those beacons will show you where the bosses are you want to try to get to those bosses without dodging or without getting hit by the broken dreams you want to dodge them as best you can and try to understand their pathing there's different types of broken dreams some of them are just sitting there some of them will kind of like roughly chase you down and some of them have like a path that they just always go back and forth so you do not want to get hit by them because if you do get hit by them this time you will actually lose HP and mana and get sent all the way to the beginning of the dungeon. So it's a really hard mechanic to do and like deal with because I feel like that's the main portion of the dungeon. If you can master that, I think you can basically beat this dungeon pretty easily. So that is like the main thing. Now there's three bosses in this whole dungeon. There's the main boss, which is Malice. And then there's two bosses that you have to complete to be able to beat Malice which is Pharaoh Ramakroc and Didri Dragon. First, we'll start off with Pharaoh Ramakroc. The Ramakroc is literally on the right side of the map. So if you took the right two portals at the beginning, you will be closer to Pharaoh Ramakroc. Now, if you look in the sky, you'll see that beacon that I was talking about. And once you make your way all the way through the maze and be able to get through him, you can do the fight. Ideally, you want to do this with two people. You can try to do this with four people, but it's really, really hard and it's not that optimal in your favor at all so you do this with two people you can have a support you can have a hitter you can have two hitters the main premise behind Pharaoh Ramakroc is that every couple of rounds he will put a hanging effect on the field if you do not clear this hanging effect he will come back alive so if he has like the little cheat and he's like I will rise rise again and he puts a hanging effect and let's say you kill him while he has that hanging effect on the field he will come back alive so make sure that every two rounds you are countering him or not every two rounds but make sure you're always countering him once you find out what the hanging effect is so you basically have to preemptively make it so you always have a counter ahead of time to be able to kill him now fair ramacroc will always be balanced but his secondary school will always be different the reason why his secondary school is always different is because you use those on the prayer reels so depending on the boss that you are fighting, so let's say, for example, um, Balanced Life, he will drop a token. Now, the, once you kill him, you'll get a token from him, which will be like, uh, you know, an astral thing, meaning it will be like eye, star, whatever. And he will also tell you what school he is, which is, in our case, life. So what you do is you go back to the beginning of your portal, and depending on which side you are, you have to enter that token on the pair wheel so since he dropped a token of i for example i go depot it and make sure that it's set on i while the other person puts the token of his school so since i fought a ramakrok that was life balanced life i have to depot the life token pretty straightforward on the prey wheel now once you do both of those things you can go back to where the boss was and behind him is the dream water pump if you activate those dream water pumps it will basically make it so the pipes around the map on your side of the map will activate and some of these will actually have dream water in them which we'll talk about in a little bit as well so hopefully you guys got a better understanding for pharaoh ramakroc he will always be balanced something and you have to pay attention to what his secondary school is because also that depends on what hanging effects that you can do in the fight because for example if, if he is balanced life i'm allowed to do weaknesses i'm allowed to do shields and i'm allowed to blade but if he's balanced fire i can only do blades and weaknesses or if he's balanced ice i can't even blade i can only do traps and shields so Pay attention to what his school is because his health also varies and um, you can only do certain hanging effects depending on uh, what his secondary school is. So pay attention to that little map that I showed at the beginning of the video because you'll be able to keep track of what hanging effects you can do per fight. Now let's go to the other side of the map, which you guys will have a boss called the Didri Dragon. The Didri Dragon will cheat cast every round of a shield. So once you guys go to that glowing light, you'll see him and you can get in a fight wherever. So with his whole cheat of doing a shield, he basically does three types of shields. Depending on what round it is, he will do a shield. So, or a different type of shield. So initially he will do a 25 shield, then he does a 50 and then he does a 90 and he keeps repeating this cycle over and over and over. Now, same premise with Pharaoh Ramakroc where his first 
school is always going to be same so he's always going to be myth something now depending on what he is pay attention to what hanging effects you're allowed to do in the fight because depending on that you can use certain stuff to counter his shields for example minotaur just not spellamented just regular minotaur can get up to six shields off of him because the fact is that minotaur hits twice and whenever you do a hit it will get rid of the 90 50 and 25 so if you had spellamented minnow but you would only use spellamented minnow if you're allowed to trap him if you are allowed to trap him you can use spellamented minnow due to the fact is that it will get rid of nine shields because of the fact is that it will get rid of three for the initial hit three for the next hit and then since spellamented minotaur what it does is it gets rid of shields for traps you can get up to another three so keep that in mind but what other things that do work on the digi dragon is you can use betrayal you can use shatter you can honestly depending on which dragon it or depending on what his secondary school is you can also put a dot on him if you wanted to so there's a lot of variety of things that you can do. You can put like a, an elf, for example, on him, but always, always pay attention to what his secondary school is. Now, same process with the Rama Croc. All you have to do is write down what school he is as a secondary. Also grab the token that he drops. Same two people, but this time on the left side, go depot it in your prayer wheels back at where you started. Now, once you depot that, go activate the dream water pump and now you have dream water flowing on your side of the map as well. Now you can, you do not have to activate both of these pumps to grab the dream water. One side can activate theirs and start looking for the dream water through the little pipes around the map on their side. It will only activate the pipes on their side. It won't activate the pipes on the other player side because the map is split down, meaning the left side has their own pipes. The right side has their own pipes, but for the right side pipes to be activated, you have to kill the boss and activate the uh, dream water pumps over there. Pretty straightforward. Now, once you find these pipes, they're basically located all across the map, and these, there will be like basically this dream water pump or dream water pipes, like these little gold ones. And to know that this that specific one is activated and working fine, there will be a puddle of water underneath it. That's kind of how you tell if you're able to activate or slash grab the dream water from it. Now, you can only hold one dream water at a time. If you get sent back to the start if you, because you hit a, dream, um, a broken dream, you do not lose your dream water. Basically, take that and go all the way to the center of the map, in the maze especially. So once you get to the maze, you can depot your dream water onto those sleeping mobs because you cannot join the malice fight if there's a minion in the fight. If he has a minion in the fight, he will cheat cast a meteor and one shot you no matter what. So you have to be able to get 12 dream water to be able to get into a fight with malice consistently. And to be able to do that is you just have to find 12 pumps that are activated on the map. The, the, the pumps are always random. So depending on how many times you've done the dungeon, the pumps will always be different. Of course, the pumps are always going to be in the same spot, but the activation portion of it is going to be a little bit random. So you have to look through all your usual pipes on your side to see if there's any dream water leaking from them. Now, like I said, once you activate three, um, all four of the, or all three of the mobs, basically once you go interact with them and, de and give them all four dream waters uh, to all three mobs, which would be 12, those will despawn the mobs from the malice fights and then you are finally able to actually interact and do a fight with malice without him cheat casting a meteor every time so keep that in mind when it comes to the water portion and grabbing it so just make sure you guys are ro roaming around look for those pipes try not to get hit with those broken dreams and just keep depoing those water uh, or like the dream water into those uh sleeping mobs and just keep looking for more dream water over and over and over so hopefully that helps quite a lot now we go on to the malice fight malice I, from a lot of players he is annoying to me he was a bit annoying at first but i can understand where cam is coming from with this whole boss design now malice has quite a lot of cheats basically what he does in his arsenal is that he has a lot of annoying cards those annoying cards can stem from him doing stuns he can do mantles he can do a monster mash which basically will give you a beguile depending on who it hits on he also has a weakening mantle which gives you a weakness and another mantle he also has fiery giant in his deck which 
puts a mantle on you because it doesn't have a dispel. And then he also has Lava Lord in his deck, which is a really long animation. But I believe that also has a mantle. And he has Ifri in his deck, but it's not just any Ifri. It's a minus 95 Ifri. So if you get hit by it, you can get a minus 95 weakness on you. And then on top of that, he also has weaknesses in his deck as well. So he's a lot of annoying things in his arsenal. Now, you do need a decent amount of accuracy in this fight because of all the mantle spam in this fight, which is very annoying to say so myself. Now, the basic premise of how to defeat Malice is that when he has no aura, you can kill him without having any issues. You basically just want to go for that one shot or having two people um, you know, go for the kill. But if you kill him while he has his hatred aura up, he will revive and say good again, and he will put a 200% outgoing aura on himself. Wait, there's no shot. Please, please, please. He's dead! He's dead! He's dead! Good again? Wait! Oh, hell, not wait. No, I don't cool. want to do this anymore. I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, I don't want to do this anymore. Which is very annoying. So to get rid of his aura, you just have to hit him. Um, there is no like certain threshold of the percent you have to do to him. You can just literally just straight up hit him and it will get rid of his aura. So the basic premise behind this is ba just basically blade stacking uh, one or two people and having one person just do a like mediocre hit just not to kill but just a mediocre hit to get rid of uh, his aura and then have the second person just basically nuke malice that's the basic premise of how to do this fight there is some other things like what's it called you can have like a constant dot on him from what players were telling me i was trying to get that in the fight but i wasn't able to test that fully but if i do get time to test it i will put it as a pinned comment because if you can have a constant dot on him, it does help because you always break his own aura. But that's the basic premise of the mouse fight. Now, it does sound like, oh, it's like not too much, but is him doing a lot of stuns, mantles and weaknesses do extend the fight quite a lot. So you got to keep that in mind. And then, of course, after you beat Malice, you'll say you won and you do not get the badge um, if you are not in the fight. So you have to make sure that you are in the fight to get the badge. And you also have to make sure that you are in the fight to get actual drops from Malice. So make sure whenever you do this dungeon down the line, uh, even when the standard mode comes out, just make sure you guys are in the fight. Of course, do not flee and just sit in the back. I did it because the factor is that we had to make sure that I had an option to cancer for them if I needed to, which is just a better safe uh, bet in my opinion. So there's that. Now of course whenever the Nightmare Dungeon actually drops in standard, you can craft the gear. You can still craft the gear right now, but it just requires you to defeat the Nightmare Dungeon 25 times regardless if it's standard or if it's on um, challenge mode. But if you are willing to, you can defeat this dungeon on challenge mode 25 times just to be like just have just have access to the gear uh pretty straightforward so be on the lookout for once the standard mode comes out i'll probably make another guide because i'm pretty sure cam would have separate cheats for some of these bosses once standard mode comes out a little bit more easier but there's probably going to be minions and stuff i wouldn't doubt it the only reason i'm saying that is because if you look at all the other challenge mode fights uh we do lose the minions in favor of the bosses having different cheats and uh, that does change up the fight drastically. So keep that in mind. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the whole breakdown of how to do the dungeon. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I will be sure to answer them. And um, yeah. So leave a like, subscribe, all type of stuff. I appreciate everyone that's been joining the Discord. Of course, like I said, we're on that grind. I've been posting content as much as I can. And we'll continue to grind to my best of abilities for you guys. And I appreciate all the people that did stop by the, the Twitch channel for the world's first race. And I'm glad that I was able to get that. And uh, yeah, there's probably going to be more videos regarding that later this week. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace out, guys.